Hello everyone, I hope you are all safe and healthy and welcome to my semantics class. This is a recording for the topics lexical relations number one and we will focus on antonyms for this session. Okay, so the materials for lexical relations, uh, I take them from Nick Raymer's book, Introducing Semantics, chapter 5 and for antonyms it is in section 5.1.1 okay so i have sent you the pdf of this book in the first meeting so i hope you go read further this chapter for more details okay let's get started so when we talk about knowing meaning of linguistic expressions such as words um, it means that we know more than just the definition or the concept associated with that word, yeah? And in addition to knowing the definition of a word as the word's meaning, a competent speaker of language will also know how different words relate to each other, yeah? So we know the so-called re lexical relations between words in addition to the definition of the word. Um, lexical relations cover these four points. So we ask questions such as which words are synonyms, those words that have closely similar meaning, and which words are antonyms, uh, whose meanings are in opposition among uh, themselves, and which words are meronyms. Um, meronyms describe part whole relation. We will see meronyms next week. And the last one, which words are hyponyms? Hyponym is uh, X is a kind of Y relation. Yeah. So hyponyms will also involve taxonomic relation that we will also cover later on. Um, these lexical relations are also called paradigmatic relations between expressions. Okay. What do we mean by paradigmatic relations? So paradigmatic relations involve the choice of one word over another. Yeah, it also involves semantic choices at certain element in a sentence. So there are certain slots in a sentence where these choices between words are possible. Yeah, and in speaking, of course, we are unconsciously confronted or faced with choice between various words that we want to use. In the sentence let's see some example of paradigmatic relations so these are four sentences and you see the one that has underlined here are the slot in the sentences where you can have different words to be inserted yeah you so you have different choices of words for you to insert into that slot so in sentence number one i'll have a glass of blah 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 so you can say I have a glass of beer wine water lemonade and so on okay so in the second sentence you, you say we bought some blah 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 okay so you can have we bought some knives forks spoon cutlery and so on okay and this kind of paradigmatic relations choices between words in certain slot in a sentence it involves usually a class of words or a group of words that have the same syntactic category whether it is a noun such as number one uh, and also sentence number two involve nouns sentence number three involve a group of words choice of words that are verbs okay so john blah 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 across the field so you can say john ran across the field John walk across the field and John crawl across the fields. If you see a uh, different choice, let's say for uh, sentence number three, different choice will indicate different meaning of the sentence. Yeah. So when you say John ran across the field, um, it's different when John crawl across the field. Okay. Um, so that is how paradigmatic relations um, has implication in meaning of the sentence okay and the last example i would like a glass of 
bla 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 sherry sherry is a kind of wine um, especially in Spanish and the paradigmatic relations involved here are choice between adjective yeah dry or sweet okay so these are uh, what we call as paradigmatic relations choice of words choice of meanings that uh, you can express in certain word classes or syntactic categories here is another example from sentence one um, that, that has two sentences um, in this sentence okay so the highlighted expression the highlighted part the one that has bold font and the italics font in 1a will have different pragmatic relations with the words that are in bold in 1b okay so bold face and italics words in 1a will have different pragmatic relations to those bold face words and italics words in 1b yeah and if you see uh quickly you um you get a sense that oh this sentence in one a and one b a little bit similar yeah but when we see later on the different choice of the words it creates differences in meaning between one a and one b let's start with um the choice between the noun here restaurants and kitchens so they have different pragmatic relations yeah, I mean, sorry, they have meronym uh, relations, okay? So kitchen is a meronym of restaurants. So kitchen is a um, component part of a restaurant, yeah? It's a part of restaurant. <clears throat> okay, next we see, um, I think this one is um, adverb kind of uh, word class, and we can have different option for this adverb yeah uh, often in 1a is the antonym of rarely in 1b yeah they have opposite meaning okay often means frequent and rarely means not frequent okay <clears throat> and next we see many and numerous as the adjective okay um yeah it's a, an adjective um modifying sushi bars and japanese food bars okay so many and numerous in this context are synonymous because they more more or less express the same meaning of indicating things or objects that are more than one yeah <clears throat> lastly uh, we see paradigmatic relations between sushi and japanese food where sushi is the hyponym of Japanese food yeah sushi is a kind of Japanese food okay <clears throat> and you see the choices that speaker make between these different paradigmatic relations different choice of the words will be based on the different meaning that this expression will convey yeah so when you choose certain word of another you know the implication that they will have different meaning okay so for instance when you say um when you say sentence 1a to your friend that is a fan of asian food yeah um they will go to the restaurant in 1a because in that restaurant there will be more frequent uh kind of asian food okay if they are a fan of sushi they will, they will also go to restaurant in 1a yeah because you say there are many sushi bars very specific types of japanese food but when you see in 1b you said the kitchens rarely have any sort of asian flair it's rare not frequent so your friend may think oh i may not go to that restaurant because it has a very rare um asian food and also it is not quite clear in the expression numerous japanese food bars it is not clear whether japanese food bars include sushi because i want to eat sushi okay but it is very explicit in 1a that the bars are sushi bars okay so that's different choices 
different paradigm paradigmatic relations and it has different implication in terms of their meaning okay and it will also have implication regarding how people will react uh, about what you said okay right um well if you have any question uh, don't hesitate to email me and i will try to answer your questions okay i will continue now to focus on antonyms so antonyms um, can you think of one or two examples okay think of one or two examples of antonyms in addition to the one that we have seen and i will continue now one two three so if you ask english native speakers for these three word pairs so good bad love hate in out you ask them whether they are antonyms they will willingly agree that they are good examples of opposition in meanings yeah? so they are antonyms good is not bad and when you love someone it may not mean that you hate them okay and this kind of opposition the, the, the opposition contrast in meaning involves several dimension okay um, for instance uh, what does this dimension of contrast has to do is that um, it can show us that one word may have more than one antonyms so like girl here can be the antonyms of both boy and woman yeah it depends on what kind of contrast that you try to highlight between girl and boy and woman so if you want to contrast girl and boy in terms of sex well um girl is the opposite of boy yeah so they have different or they have uh, opposing meaning in terms of the sex dimensions but um when girl and boy is contrasted in terms of age maybe they are similar yeah girl and boy are young in age but then when you contrast girl uh, in terms of age it will have woman as the antonym okay so girl will be the antonym of woman when you think about them as different along the dimensions of age okay and this different dimension of contrast underlie or is the basis for the fact that one word such as girl can have more than one uh, antonym okay however uh, what we need to think uh, or we also need to pay attention to is that not every word will have obvious antonyms yeah with clear dimension of contrast can you think of one or two example so you can pause this video and start thinking example of word that don't really have antonyms and i will continue in one two three think about words such as library okay or the word off or maybe um school what is the antonym of school okay is it office or is it home and how about angry yeah so um not every word will have antonym okay so the first practical things that you need to do now is that you need to find out 10 words that do not seem to have clear antonyms okay think about that find that out and uh, you can submit your answer through this google form link yeah um and so question number one is a must so you need to find out 10 words that do not seem to have clear antonyms and as a bonus point you can think about or create a create a context where the words that you think do not have antonyms can have antonyms yeah so try to create a context where antonyms are possible for these 10 uh, words that you look at okay and you can submit it to the google form link below okay and what is important in the study of antonym is that antonym can be differentiated into gradable and non-gradable antonym so gradable uh, non-gradable antonym 
uh, does not involve middle point in the scale. So antonyms uh, in in gradable antonyms they are there are scale yeah um, and there is in, in non gradable antonyms you just talk about one and and the other end of the antonym scales. So there is no something in between in non gradable antonyms. Words such as male and female, okay, pass and fail. Okay, so non gradable antonym, one of the members of non gradable antonym will involve denial, will reject the other. For instance, if you fail the test, you necessarily did not pass it. Yeah. So you can you cannot say, oh, I fail failed the test, but I'm a bit past it. Yeah, so doesn't make sense. So that is non-gradable uh, antonyms. Um, but what is more common in languages is that antonyms are gradable. Yeah, hot and cold. So you can compare something to be more uh, or to be hotter or to be colder yeah so there is grad gradation between hotness or coldness um, of something so this is the example of the scale where there is something in between the two antonym okay so there is hot and and cold and and there is something in between there Okay, tepid, which is neither hot nor cold, or swam swam kuku in Indonesian. And the crucial linguistic feature of gradable antonym is that it can occur in comparative structure. Yeah, so in, in comparative sentences. So, for instance, you can say, uh, your drink is hotter than my wife's, uh, your wife's drink, or you can say this water is less cold than another. Okay, so there is a possibility to have comparative structure in gradable antonym. Right, um, practical things to do. List 15 gradable antonym pairs and 15 non-gradable antonym pairs. Okay, um, so find out 15 pairs uh, and 15 other 15 pairs for non-gradable, 15 pairs for gradable antonym. And you can submit that via um, the Google form below, okay? And you need to think about that yourself first before you get stuck and um, find from external sources. And you need to find out the link. You need to take note on the link of that uh, external sources that you use, okay? Right, um, when we talk about gradable antonyms, um, We've seen before the example that is ejective, but um, credible antonyms, um, sorry, is not only uh, verb, uh, is not only adjective, but verb is also possible. So words such as love and hate, um, yeah, you can say I love him a lot. So there is a comparison yeah, if you say I kind of love him it means you are not really loving him but when you say i love him a lot it means there is much more love uh, to him okay so there is comparison even between this verb yeah because it is gradable antonyms i'm skipping a bit feature of gradable antonyms here namely one of the member okay when you see two words that are antonyms, um, especially gradable antonyms, one of the word, uh, one of the words can behave neutrally. So yeah, it does not commit you to say that something is good. Okay, um, the, the, the good example here is good and bad. Yeah, so good and bad is a pair of gradable antonym. And in this pair, good is neutral. Okay, it is used neutrally in question and comparative sentences. What does it mean by good is a neutral credible antonym? This means that um, the speaker or the hearer does not have to commit into the goodness of something. For instance, in question number two, when your friend asks you, hey, how good is that film? 
yeah so in this question good behave neutrally it can get the answer of the film is bad or the film is good so that's what it means by neutral yeah so you don't have to say when you are asked how good is that film you don't have to say that the film is this good or that good you can just say oh that's bad yeah so that's what it means by behaving neutral and also in comparative sentence better is neutral yeah it doesn't indicate that the film is good in general it just say film is better than the tv series but actually it may be the film bad yeah the film may be just average so so or even bad okay and another fact to show that good is neutral here and does not commit you to the goodness of something is shown by example 5 so you are you were asked how good is that film you say really bad as i've mentioned before i've said that before yeah how good is that film you can just say really bad you don't have to commit yourself to say oh the film is very good or pretty good you can just say really bad that's fine in english yeah and um example six when you see the film is better than the tv series but it's still really bad that also indicates that better is neutral yeah it is the film better than the tv series but still the film is very bad okay however in contrast bad the the pair of good in comparative and its comparative form awards um force you to the badness of something yeah it commits you to respond to the badness of something okay so if you see example seven when you were asked how bad is that film um it's not bad okay so when you uh, when you ask how bad is that film it already indicates that you commit that the movie is bad even though the fact it is not yeah um so that's uh, what it means by the commitment or the non-neutral behavior of bad in comparison to, to good okay you see another example in eight which is um sounds strange when you say the film is worse than the tv series but they're really they're both really good it doesn't make sense you said the film is worse than the tv series but you still say they are really good that doesn't make any sense it's because worse and bad already commit you to the badness of something okay it is not the case with good where when you say the film is better than the tv series it doesn't mean that the film is good okay okay i think um for the next here is that uh, the key point here is that not all gradable antonyms behave as like good and uh, bad yeah um so you can see here hot and cold is non-neutral so when you ask how hot is the saucepan it just means that the saucepan is hot okay when you ask how hot is the saucepan it already indicates that that the saucepan is hot but you just want to know how much is the hotness okay how much is the heat in the saucepan right so that's non-neutral behavior of hot okay so now the last practical things to do at home which is it's just a bonus yeah um you don't really need to answer it but it is a bonus score um think about these noun pairs hero and coward genius and dog giant and stupid. so you can look at uh, look up their meanings in the dictionary and you need to find out whether they are gradable antonyms or not okay find out whether these noun pairs are gradable antonyms or not and if they are um try to argue try to describe why they are credible antonyms and you can submit that to the google form link here and um i think that's all from me today and thank you for watching i hope to see you soon next week bye